guys, I wanted to show you some sketches and paintings I've been doing. I have been trying to get back to a subject I've not done in a long time, which is flowers. And I've been trying to think about how I want to paint flowers now. So I've been painting several in my sketchbook. And then I did a couple other paintings and I wanted to show you. I still have not figured out how I want to like express myself if I even want to paint flowers again. Uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd start in my sketchbook. I actually really love this one. It's not how I want to express myself fully, but I, I liked the sketch. I liked all the broken paint. It looks like really nice, like worn wallpaper. And it feels like wallpaper too, it's nice. And then I did this one. I liked this one too. It's nice and cheery and sunny, but again, not, I mean, it's a great sketch. It's a great painting. I love it. And it would probably look really pretty up on somebody's wall, but not how I really want to, you know, I wouldn't want to do a big painting of this. Then I did this. I have a piece of wax paper because I did put some pastel. Oh, it's smushing everywhere. And the pastel, even though I sprayed some fixative over it, is still squishing. So I tried to do this a little more like kind of a land, uh, not landscape, geez, still life kind of thing. And again, a pretty sketch, a pretty painting. And some people would probably like this and would want to buy it. But this is not me. I mean, yes, I did it, but it's not how I like really want to express myself. I think actually what I want to do instead of like making up flowers, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but I think I, next time I'm at the grocery store, I'm actually gonna buy some flowers. I feel like I want to just kind of look at them and just like, you know, actually like paint from life. Now I did this one right here, which is so simple. And actually, can I even call it flowers? I really can't even call it flowers because there's literally no flowers. But I did this and I just wanted to stop right there. I thought, no, I love the shapes and the negative spaces. I just thought, well, it's mine. I can stop if I want. I did this one on canvas board, some old canvas board that I've had that uh, I haven't really loved painting on. So I just thought, well, I'll paint on it, but I love this. So I'm still not there, but I'm getting closer. Then the next one I'm going to show you is not it either, but I'll show it to you. So I did this one and what I'm actually about to do, the reason I picked up the camera, I don't like this one either. And I'm just going to paint right on over it. Like, I don't think there's a single aspect of it that I really like. I don't like the colors. Uh, yeah, nothing. I liked painting it. It was fun, but I'm going to paint over this, which I know that some of y'all are probably cringing, but I'm going to set up the camera and just let y'all watch me demolish this. And we'll see what comes from it. I have a feeling something better will come from it. And what will be nice is some of this underlayer stuff will be saved. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm sorry if some of y'all are like, we wanted to buy that. Not for me. Okay, let me just, let me, let me just make note of this too. Because somebody's going to notice and say something. So yes, you do see a signature. I will do that sometimes when I know what color I want to do my signature. And... You know, I thought I was kind of done with this area, but I had some blue, so I thought I would just sign it. But now I'm going to paint over it, so I'll be signing it again. No, oh, I just found this other one too. I forgot about this one. I painted this for my mom for Mother's Day, just as a, a card. I'm going to write on the back of it, and I did sign my name in case she does want to, like, pop it in a frame. But it was really just meant to be a card, kind of a big card. I didn't want to do a small card this year up in the mood to paint big. And so here's another one. And again, I like it. It's nice. It's pretty. But it's not really how I want to say things at this point. Does this make you guys nervous when I do this? I mean, I feel like seeing this black on here, it already looks better. I do wish I had saved a little more of this background that was already painted with the pattern because it does look good with little bits of it peeping through the black. And sometimes you'll see me get in there really strong firmly with my thumb or finger and it's because I'm trying to smush something away or make a different edge. I also want you to notice, I think I use my Chinese bristle brushes. That's what I call them. 
They're like calligraphy brushes through this whole thing. And also just take note of how I hold my brush. I'm always holding it at the end, especially when I'm doing things like flowers and leaves because you really want interesting shapes. And that's one of the best ways to do it is to have as little control over that brush as possible. For my black, I never, for my black, I never use just straight black. I always, I usually, what I do for my black, if I don't mix it like from scratch, I um, add some like more like a cad red, not my pinky red, but my red red to it. And it just makes it so much better. It's just whites and reds, or whites and blacks are really tough and black always looks better when you add something to it. Let me show you this beautiful green. I think one of the things I'm not liking about this is there's a lot of fake green. I just added some yellow to that black and uh, you just get gorgeous greens when you when you do that. I'm, I'm trying not to pay attention too much to the background, but I do want to keep maybe some things. I, I just don't know yet. I do like these berries. This green that I'm about to put on here, I added more yellow, added a tiny bit of like my red red and a little bit of white. As I'm making all this leaf stuff, look more at my hand than at the stuff that I'm painting because you're going to see more of the motion. And I've kind of had plants in mind when I'm doing these. Like this I'm kind of thinking about a fern that I used to have that kind of had like, um, like whoopity whoop leaves. I don't really know how to explain it. And then look right here too. I'm kind of doing this like twisting with my brush as I'm doing this. I just, yeah, I'm just trying to use the brush and think about hand motion and movement while I'm making these. And even with my arm, you'll see my arm sometimes just fully twist and move. That's just a great way to get some unique shapes with leaves and flowers. I'm also just changing up the color just slightly of the screen each time I like run out. I don't make big puddles of color. I just keep mixing because I do want there to be a similarity around the whole painting, but I also want there to be slight variances. So as I mix, I'll use somewhat similar color, but it's never exactly the same. So then there's just these slight variances. And especially as I go back and make little details in the leaves, I want there to be similar color palette that moves around the painting. So I'll just take a color that I've made big leaf shape out of. And then when I go back with other leaves and make details, I'll use a similar color or that same color. You can tell right here that the black is still wet which is really nice it's one of the reasons i love this so flat paint because it doesn't dry too fast but because of that i'm getting some interesting markings with this wet and wet which i really love i mean i am working fast but you do have some time with this paint which is really really nice now here is a wonderful example of why you shouldn't fear making a mistake because here i am painting over this vase because i didn't like it the first time and now i'm making use of those textures that are underneath this now paint that I'm kind of painting in a transparent way and that's just going to add a layer to this painting that I could have not have gotten if I did not paint it the first go around. And then here I'm getting my hands in it. My brain tells me that this is a vase and there's all these nice smooth lines but then my painter brain comes in and says no 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 let's not have smooth lines we need to mess it up some. So then your hand comes in really handy. Oh. A little pun there to mess up the edges and then now I'm using a paper towel and kind of just blopping and smudging and now the paint that's on that paper towel I'm smushing around to get that color in other areas and also popping in some berries the same color as the vase just to move that color around some. Okay now that I've done all that I'm liking it better I think what I'm gonna do I do think maybe I want to keep this color background so I'm gonna just kind of carve away and see what happens. I won't lie, I do find this complicated because I do want to save some of these yellow bits. Um, yeah, so I'm using my mirror a lot too. I'm looking backwards to see where it needs some breathing room. I'm really just trying to find pleasing shapes at this point. I'm literally like pretty much just looking in the mirror to find these spots. It's really easy to to find them with the mirror. It's just the weirdest thing if you ask me. But I love this method. I'm also just trying to make pleasing shapes, so I don't like that shape at all. 
So I'm going to wipe it. You're going to see that the way I use a brush, sometimes I'm doing very slow movements and sometimes really fast movements to get these marks. Now I'm feeling like all of this is right and this is not, so I don't know. I'm first going to just kind of mess it up a little. I think it's just not the right color. But let's just see if a dirty rag will help. Yeah, I don't know what color to make it. I'm really leaning towards a pink. But I did like the like blue dots showing through. Oh, I should have done stripes. Oh well, too late for that now. Yeah, maybe it needed like a pattern. I don't know at this point. I lost it, so. As I'm working, I'm still just trying to not be precious. I'm trying to slop things on. I want to keep that movement and freshness and vibrancy, and I don't want to lose that. And even as I'm doing these stripes, I'm trying to do them in different ways, like moving my hand in different ways. And then I'm trying to just go back in and fill in some spots with these greens because I lost some of that green that came down into the vase and I want to replace that. Okay, I'm already liking that better. I'm going to just live with that for a little bit. I'm going to let that dry and come back tomorrow and see what I think of it. Oh, probably will have some paint on the palette and my brush is all dirty. I'm going to sign it someplace. What I do for that, also just look in the mirror backwards. I don't know. It just always reveals very easily where to sign that. And then I also have to decide which color. Okay. See, I would have thought over here, but when I look in the, well, Okay. Yep. I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to do it with the red because I think that could be pretty. The pop of color. I am literally always worried every single time that I sign my name that I'm spelling it wrong. I mean, that may not be normal and maybe nobody else worries about that, but I get so into just the like actual process of doing it that I kind of lose track of the actual spelling. Uh, so it will be interesting if I ever have any paintings out there where my name is misspelled. Good morning, guys. It is Friday morning. And I came in first thing this morning and ass assessed the painting from yesterday. And I'm so happy with it. I can't even remember if I showed you the end of the day or not. I think not because I think that I thought that I still had work to do on it. But I'm really happy with it. And I got inspired enough to do, I'm going to do a big canvas. I've got a big one back there ready. But let me show you how the painting from yesterday turned out. I'm really happy with these small ones I've been doing. And... I think I'm gonna just jump into it and do a big one, why not? So one of the things that I do is at night before we go to bed, I will often pop in here and just turn the lights on for a minute and assess whatever I painted that day. It's for me a nice way to kind of fall asleep to think about how I'm gonna work on that painting tomorrow or just, I don't know, I just kind of assess things and think about things with the painting and I don't know why I'm telling you all that, but that's just what I do. And then first thing in the morning, I love coming and seeing what I did the day before. It's just a nice way to start the day. I don't know. It's what I do. All right, let me show you the painting. Okay, this actually kind of works out well because it's in front of this big white canvas. I'm thrilled with it. I mean, I would pop that in a frame and put it on my wall. So I'm really happy. I hope that you guys are happy. I hope that you see what progress happens when you take the risk and when you know that it's not quite right and then you just keep working on it. It has so much more, I feel like, dimension to it. And I also love the process of just like cutting back in it really adds dynamic shapes. And then still see, I see how the flowers that I left, like that now looks like a whole brand new flower. Where before, remember it was that really big one back there? And then I still have little peeps of the blue vase. Look. And I just love that even peeps of, what was that, like a leaf? Some of that old green. And then even down here, you can still see a little bit of the old vase and little bits of color. Yeah, I just, I really love this method. I don't really think that my name, I signed that in the right color, but I'm just gonna leave it. So yeah, I'm thrilled with it. And now, look how much bigger I'm gonna go. Okay, I got out this bad painting that I don't like, but I am thinking about using the rug 
as inspiration for kind of like a tablecloth really wanting to do like the horses since I'm doing something big I feel like you know like the tablecloth area I want it to be fun I'm allowing myself pattern here and here and then of course all this is pattern and I have some ideas on color theme but as we all know that very well may change and probably will change and that's always a good thing so I'm not gonna worry about it I'm just gonna jump into it and I can because I finally got my big things of paint that came in the mail I was like running out of paint I've been painting so much all right I'm gonna get to this and I will bring you guys along I'm listening to talking with the painters as I work on this big canvas Here's where I am. I started working on this down here. And because I know I usually put more and more layers on, I wanted to get started up here because I'm actually gonna cut in to these big shapes to make more like leaf and flower kind of shapes, I think. I mean, I kind of like it like it is, but I want to be working on the whole, like all together. So this is where I am and I'm really happy with it so far. I'm about to put in the like leaf shapes and colors. I've learned that it goes better if I get those in kind of as the background and work, then start putting on the flowers and then put more leaves in and then probably change everything and that's how it usually works. So there's that. While I do this, I'm really not thinking about, you know, composition or anything like that. I just want to play and get some free movement marks on there. I am, though, thinking about uh, value. So I try to get some darks in there pretty quick. Lots of thinking about movement or the shape of the leaves. So I want some big things and I want some smaller things. Alrighty, here's where I am and I'm really happy. I basically got some dark leaves and some really light leaves. I mean, I have some medium, but I still consider this kind of dark. I think I'm going to put some medium color leaves and throw some flowers in and assess. So far, I'm happy. I'd put this up on my wall even just like this. I'm literally sitting here editing this week's video, this video that you're watching. And like the footage ran out. I was like, did I not finish that painting? I was like, where is that painting? I don't even remember. And then look, it's up there. I didn't finish the painting. I don't think, let me show you. Okay, so it's up there. Here's one of the ones that I did. The other one is in my den on the wall because I liked it, but I don't think I finished it. I'm gonna go get that one down. Actually guys, I'm pretty, no, 
it is exactly the same. Yeah, I didn't do anything else to it. Hmm. I do kind of like it how it is. I think what I should do is put it up on the wall someplace in another room to see what I think about it. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm also wondering, okay, just ignore all the stuff up here, like the grapes that are turning to raisins, but I do think that painting with the two that kind of go with the same style could look good up here. I'm thinking about that, but that feels like a big commitment to put holes in the wall and all that. Maybe I'll have Grady come in and hold it up. And so basically, holy moly, sometimes I'm like, blah, 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 why can't I complete a sentence? Basically what I'm trying to say is I need to assess if it's finished or not, or if I need to go back into it. This is what happens a lot for me. I'll put a painting up someplace. Ooh, my arm's getting tired. Like just put it up on these shelves that I have and kind of get over them. You know what I mean? Where it's like, no, I think I can go back in and play around with that some more. What I like about those paintings is they don't really look like my style. So I may put them up someplace in the house because they look a little different and they are colorful and fun. I think that's what I should do. Walk around the house and see if I have any spots left that I can put them. Cause they, they do, they do go together, but up there it could be nice. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. But let me tell you this. So yesterday when I was editing, I was getting inspired by these flowers. I hope you are too. And so I wasn't feeling good yesterday. Actually, I'm not feeling good today either. I wanted to paint a little. So I got one of my pieces of paper out, some cheap paper that I've recently gotten, future vlog on cheap papers that I'm testing out for you guys. I thought, I just want to slap some paint on. I don't feel very good, but this is inspiring me. So let's just grab a piece of paper, cheap paper, and slap some paint on. And this is what I ended up painting. I haven't taken the tape off yet. We'll do that together. This simple painting, I'm, now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if I love this, I, but it, it really just doesn't matter because it's on paper. But let's take this tape off and see what it looks like finished. Just a simple little painting on paper. Oh. And I used my sunflower things over there. And, oh boy, that's bright. Oops. And the flowers from this sketch. I kind of was using this as inspiration too for, for these flowers. I mean, why is this little task of pulling off tape so stinking satisfying? I don't know what it is. Anybody else feel like that? Oh, I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm real happy with that. It's a nice little sketch. All right, that's it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of these flower sketches, if there were any of them that were your favorite. And I will see you back here next week. Bye, guys.